Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the Borderland Blitz, sponsored by Southwest University. I'm Adrian Ochoa, Rachel Phillips, and uh, Rachel, we have arrived. The final week of the regular season of high school football, at least here in Texas. I honestly, I, I said this last week, but I do not know where the time has gone. It is crazy, but I guess we've been distracted by all the good football. And have you enjoyed the Friday Night Lights, your full oh, season? Loving it. I actually recently started rewatching Friday Night Lights, and I feel like fully immersed right now. I'm ready for it. Awesome stuff. Thank you very much. Well, district championships. Playoff spots, we're on the line tonight. Let's take a look at our starting lineup. Our game of the week takes us out to Big Red Country. The Bel Air Highlanders taking on the Del Valle Conquistadores. Bel Air looking to get a share of that District 15A Division I championship, but Del Valle would like to have that all to themselves. We'll then turn to District 16A. Eastwood hosting Eastlake. The winner would get the top seed in the Class 6A Division II playoffs. And then later, it's already playoff time in New Mexico. In Class 5A, it was a first round matchup between San Teresa and Mayfield. Who's moving on to the quarterfinals? Well, you'll find out soon. Well, we'll start with a showdown in the Lower Valley. Del Valle has been unstoppable in district play, a perfect 3-0. Bel Air, meanwhile, was 2-1 and, and would like nothing more than to knock the Conquistadores off of the throne. A win for the Highlanders would mean them and Del Valle, Parkland as well, would possibly share the district title, but Del Valle, well, they don't care about sharing. Sharing is not caring to those Conquistadores. It's tonight's game of the week. The Big Red Country, we go Highlanders, Conquistadores. Bel Air fired up in this one, but Del Valle was a little bit more fired up. As you see it right there, they wasted no time. Jesse Ramos with the quarterback sneak made it 7-0 Del Valle. Then Del Valle's Ramos going to go to the air this time with the pass to Matt Lopez. That made it 14-0 Del Valle. And a look at this play coming up. Oh, you see the Conquista Lorde plus the move right there. Ramos with the pass, but look at this. It gets oh. tipped off of a player's hand, and Eli Molina catches it and make, takes it to the house. Possible Sweet play. play. Of the game. Possible cupcakes might be headed to Del Valle. That made it 21 to nothing Del Valle. And Ramos again with the quarterback keeper pushing it through. 27 to nothing Del Valle just rolling. And uh, here we go again. Ramos with another quarterback keeper. Just Ramos welcomed to end zone city, making it look easy. It was 35 to nothing at the half. And that young man really liked that uh, result there. Final score is going to like this one even better as Del Valle is moving on. We could take the final. Yeah, totally. They win big. 66 to 7. The final as we hear from Del Valle's head coach, Rudy Contreras. Man, it's a great day to be a conquistador. How do you get ready for next week on playoff football coming up? We keep preparing. Keep doing what we've been doing all year long. You know, one day at a time, one day at a time. And, and we're excited for the matchup next week. It's going to be a good one, but playoff football it should be. Man, it feels great, man. Bounce back. Last year, we fell short. It feels great to come back and, and win it like this. Yes, All right, what do you what do you feel made it happen with the offense, defense? Um, practice, practice. We we worked each other, uh, defense, offense, and it showed in the game. We love to see it celebrating with the gold football that's going to go in the trophy case. Del, Del Valle back to back champs, a district 15A division one. So congratulations to those Del Valle Conquistadores. So who do they get in the bye district round? Well, Del Valle will host Abilene on Thursday. Meantime, Bel Air will take on Lubbock Cooper and will have to hit the road for that game. And just quick shout out to Bel Air, the teacher's tailgate, uh, keeping us warm. They gave me a hot cocoa. I was oh, freezing out there. So yeah. thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. and Interesting, celebrating on your competitor's turf yeah. away from home. That, that's got to sting a little even more for the Bel Air Highlanders. Yeah. Well, uh, another big game in District 1, 5A Division 1 was between the Hanks Knights and the Isleta Indians. No district title on the line in this one. Rather, a playoff spot was up for grabs. It was real simple. Win and you're in. For the loser, well, better luck next season. Let's head out to the dancing Hanks Knights and Isleta Indians. Everyone vibing out there, including the Hanks band who can... Uh, jump all right and uh, they could have used some of that on the field the hop into the end zone not enough from Ruben Laguna here and they'd settle for a field goal and take a 10 to 3 lead and that was a big momentum switcher in this very cold and windy game don't believe we'll just look the over the top blanket here smart move yeah and then look at this about one inch of this lady's <laughs> face showing 
Smart humans who clearly listen to Doppel Day's forecast. Me, on the other hand, just being an appalling parent to Blitzy. He's nice and cozy. Yeah, well, I let him go to the game without a beanie, though. It's any consolation, I also didn't have a beanie. But uh, we were warming up because the East letter offense was firing. Former sweep play of the week winner, Arath Gomez, just bursting into the end zone there. They take a 14-10 lead. And after the defense forced a fumble, East letter would hit again. This time, Evan Martinez to Devon Hernandez. And they're up. 21 to 10. You all deserve a star for that play, but oh no, it's flying away. Those <laughs> wins, guys, getting in there. Hank's now trying to hit back, and this pass gets them in range. And then later on, fourth down, they go for it, but can't convert. Kind of like UTEP last night. Oh, Too soon. You had to go sorry. there. Yeah. Had to go there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Final score is let a win at 28 to 10, and in turn, advance to the playoffs. They will play Amarillo Tuscosa in the first round of the playoffs. Amarillo Tuscosa are going to be a tough challenge for those Indians. Yeah, very much so. Well, our final game in District 1, 5A Division 1, the Parkland Matadors hosting the Horizon Scorpions. Parkland is headed to the playoffs as, a, as it's 21-7. Parkland in the beginning of the third, and QB Miguel Echera hands it off to Isaiah Beasley, who runs it in from the 25-yard for a Matador touchdown. It's 28-7 to now, and check out this next play. Scorpions, Alex Castro passes it to his wide receiver, who in return fumbles oh. it. Oh, but here's Johnny oh, on the go. spot. Joe Martinez to recover the fumble. Several plays later, the Scorpions would settle for a field goal. 28 to 10 now and free not for the Matadors. And the Scorpions are in the march when Oliver Affa makes an errant throw right there. Picked off by Parkland's Andre Johnson. And uh, well, he'll reap the benefits. Very next play, Miguel Echevria throws a 50-yard dart to DJ Crest. Putting the Matadors well ahead, 35 to 10. Parkland then win it 48 to 10. And we'll host Amarillo on Friday in the Bay District Rams. Always good to see, you know, when the teams get to host a game, they don't have to worry about any road trips or anything. So congratulations to Parkland and Del Valle. They'll be uh, getting to host. Raz Beller will have to hit the road as well as he sled out. So he's got a tough challenge ahead of, ahead of him. Well, turning now to District 16A, the District Champs, Pebble Hills, on a bye week. They played 10 games straight, won the title, and now they get to sit back and get some much-needed rest before That's the start. That's the way to do it, yeah. That's the way to do it. <laughs> before the start of the playoffs next week, but there was a lot left to be decided in 16A. Eastlake paying a visit to Eastwood tonight. The winner of this game would take the top seed in the 6A Division II playoffs, and that means, and they'd also mean they'd get to host a playoff game while the loser will have to travel. So we go to Trooper Stadium where it was senior night and shout out to my good friend. I've been showing him all season long, Mikey Ramirez, his senior year as well there with his mom and his nephews. He was honored before the game. This one was all Troopers. Keep an eye on number 59 right there. You see him coming right at you. The, the big time hit. Lomeli does get the pass off, but Troopers swarm all over it. First quarter here, Troop from the one yard line. Evan Minjares, punch it, count it. Troopers up seven to nothing. Then later in the quarter, Eastlake going to punt. And the worst thing that can happen happens. It gets blocked. And the Troopers on top of it. And with good field position, once again within striking distance. And they would cash in the handoff to Max Mancia and Mad Max with the house call there. It's 14 to nothing, Troopers. Then another big play on defense for the Troop. As Eastlake with the ball here, but Christian Munoz says, let's take it the other way with the pick. The Troopers wasting no time once again, finding the end zone. This time they're not going to go to the run game. They're going to go to the air. Minjares to Curtis Murillo. To who else? I know, and there you see it. Uh, Rachel, what do you call this dance right here from Curtis Murillo? Check it out right here. Oh, the waddle. <laughs> He's yeah. doing the waddle, folks. Yeah, they, and I, I love to see this. Murillo, after that touchdown, take take a look. To say, he's celebrating with his, with Mikey there on the sideline. Yeah, he's a, he's a big supporter of the troop, obviously. 42 to nothing. Eastwood gets the win. So Eastwood will host San Angelo Central next week, while Eastlake will have to travel to Friendship in the by district round. Congratulations to those troopers. And there it is, the trooper clap. There, we got <laughs> that out. over at the sack, it was Socorro taking on America's two teams, looking to end their season in the win column with America's starting on strong here. Quarterback Mark Moore finds Abdiel Rincon in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Second quarter now, handoff to Brian from East for 20 yards. And uh, yeah, that's pretty nice, but uh, watch this. It's even nicer because that set up this next play, uh, the screen pass 
from Moore to Anthony Miranda, who takes it all the way to the house around the outside. He is in. Then on the ensuing extra point, a scuffle between both teams. Guys, your season's already oh, over. Yeah. Don't waste it. Come on. In total, seven players were penalized. Two of each team ejected. Next drive for the Trailblazers. Moore with the pass to Cesar Brennan, all alone for the score. Americas with the big win, 56 to nil. Well, at least the Blazers, you know, will get to cap off their season in the win column as they look towards, you know, 2023. But we're going to go ahead. Uh, will was over at Coronado as the T-Birds played host to the Montwood Rams, and then he headed over to the Blue Turf at Canotillo. Check in on the champs of District 15A Division 2, those Kenneth Eagles. What's going on, Will? Yeah, you told him everything that I was going to say. Thanks for that. Oh, uh, I'm sorry about that. Speak about it. Will, come on, you got this. In the <laughs> win column. Anyways, good evening, everybody. Sorry about last week. I had that crud that was going around, and if yeah. you're the one that got me sick, watch your back. I don't want Will on my back. Thunderbird Stadium, I'm pretty heavy. <laughs> <laughs> we go out to Coronado, taking on the Rams. Both teams, two and seven, basically playing for pride, but play they did. First quarter, Rams up for Isaac Galvan. It's Caleb Alvarez with the round, a perfect wide receiver screen. My man takes it to the Coronado, 20-yard line before going out of bounds. Next play, Dante Gray gets the rock and makes some beautiful cuts to take it in. For the score, Coronado, though, was still in this one after finding their way back to the Rams' 10-yard line. Owen oh, Levesque is going to hand the ball off to Thomas Murray, who takes it to the right side of the field and then makes his way into the end zone. T-Bird's going with it. Over to going for two. Levesque with the rollout pass to the big body in tight end. Mateo Grajeda. Now that rollout pass to crossing tight end or wide receiver was working all day long for Coronado. Rams offense would sputter with under a minute left in the first half. Again, Levisky with the rollout pass, but this time a wide open Blake Randig. The T-Birds were in fuego through the air. Coronado won it 41 to 35. Well, first time all year. I got to check out some of these West Side games. Can you teal? And El Paso going out to the blue turf. Both teams with winning records, Tigers. Two and two, while the Eagles are a perfect 4-0 in district play. First quarter, Kenny Teal's first drive, and it's missed a touchdown. L.J. Martin takes the rock to the Tiger 20-yard line and gets the extra, extra points for the monster stiff arm right there. And it's not broke. Don't fix it. Martin with another carry. Fakes up the D-line, fakes me out, then <laughs> runs over for it the happened. study. I was like, where, where am right. I looking? He just didn't trust me. I'll pass it looking for a break. Thinks they have it with this muff punt catch. Pedro Chavez picks up what he thinks is a live ball. Runs it back for the score, but those mean old refs Come are going to come first. They're going to decide that the ball is down on the 20-yard line. Want to give you guys a slow motion look, a little bit of a zoom in. I don't know, man. Off, Looks man. like that was a good call. Oh, oh man, he wasn't like yeah. that, though. If he didn't like that, he really wasn't going to like this. Next play, Jerry Chaitis runs into trouble and decides, I'm going to throw it across my body into the Eagles' defense for the pick. Can you teal, though? They're going to make them pay. Jeremiah Knox finds Anthony Ayala, who scampers in for the six-point withdrawal. Can you teal all over him? 49 to nothing. Well, thank you. Professional performance there from Canatia. Oh, oh, yeah. Canatia. Oh, you meant me. <laughs> <laughs> you too, Will. I, yeah. Even more professional. You're than just Canatia. a heavy performer. That was like a 55 nil win from you and a 49 Will for a win from Canatia. So you did better. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much, Will. We'll check in with you next week. Our final episode already. It's sad face there. Uh, playoff tears are starting playoff to stream down the face. Uh, speaking of Canatia, they'll get to host a playoff game by district round game. They'll actually play on Thursday against Amarillo Paulo Duro, while El Paso, they clinched the fourth and final playoff spot in that district. They'll have to hit the road, travel to Abilene Wiley. Uh, let's go ahead and turn across state lines now in New Mexico, where it's uh, playoff time in Class 5A with Santa Teresa, taking on Mayfield in a first round showdown. ABC 7's Drew Crossgrave joins us with those highlights. What's going on, Drew? I'm doubt that it's not only a playoff season, it's Christmas season. There was Christmas music on the radio on my way to Las Cruces, so that's also a positive. But, you know, with Santa Teresa against Mayfield, the defenses were strong in the first half, and they couldn't seem to get anything going. As you see right here, they're walking out into the stadium, and Mayfield's getting ready to go. But as I said, the defense was incredibly strong in the first half. It was a very low-scoring affair, 7-0 at the first half. But you can see running back Angel Gutierrez taking it upon himself to truck over the defense, go up, and then 
right here, you see right here the Mayfield defense. Defense is just incredibly strong. Like I said, that went back and forth the whole first half. But back to Angel Gutierrez, it was his show. He went on to take this, this ball right here for a long touchdown, putting them up 7-0 at the end of the first half. But Mayfield, they uh, turned it around the second half because they ended up winning 21-10. Thank you very much, uh, Drew. And uh, we should mention also Gazden will be in action tomorrow. They'll be taking on Los Alamos. That's another 5A uh, matchup in the first round. Whereas uh, in 6A, Centennial, you know, they're, they're, they're kicking cruising. back. Yeah, they're, they're kicking back. They got the bye. They're like, eh, they what Pebble Hills did this week. Like, eh, we'll just watch the other teams, see what happens. Yeah, let, let the other teams wear themselves out. And Centennial, of course, had the phenomenal season. And uh, they capped it off with our sweet play of yeah. the cupcakes. And so they're, they're still in the cupcake fuel there. Uh, let's go ahead and play more to come here on the Borderland Blitz. We're going to go ahead and take our first commercial break here. Uh, coming up, we'll turn our attention to District 15A Division 2, where Andrews Chapin playing for Northeast bragging rights and also for district seedings as well. Also, District 14A, Riverside was looking to win that district title outright as they hosted Bowie. And, of course, we got our War of the Week. And also, we got a story from you, Rachel. Let's take a preview here. It's when they watch their parents, they learn so much by imitating and watching. And as a kid, I would watch some of the best role models you could ask for um, and the coaches that we had here at Coronado. Look at the Coronado coaching connection that is putting passion back into the program as Mike Pry closes out his first season as head coach. I'm a 25-year truck driver. I've been driving for Arrivas Enterprises for six. I have a million miles. I'm home every weekend. The benefits and the respect that you get in this company is outstanding. If you're looking for a place to call home, call Rivas Enterprises. We feel like life is for living, celebrating the wins, and enjoying the moments that matter. At Rise Federal Credit Union, we provide the advice and tools to help make your money work for you. That way you can focus on what could be no matter where you start from or where you want to go. Ready to dream big? We're here to help you get there. Together, we rise. I'm a 25-year truck driver. I've been driving for Arrivas Enterprises for six. I have a million miles. I'm home every weekend. The benefits and the respect that you get in this company is outstanding. If you're looking for a place to call home, call Arrivas Enterprises. It's your voice, your vote. Count on ABC 7 for complete coverage on election night. Live coverage begins at 4 p.m., followed by World News Tonight with David Muir at 4.30, and then a special edition of ABC 7 at 5. Constant updates on air, online, and on the KVI 8 news app. Extra perspective at 9 on KVI.com and the El Paso Las Cruces CW. And on ABC 7 at 10, get breaking results on the big races that could change the balance of power. ABC 7, complete election coverage you won't see anywhere else. Rangers, mighty, mighty Rangers. Yeah, they don't want to smile about so They were more than happy to uh, give us a quick shout right there. We'll get to that game in a bit because it was good. Well, first, we'll continue our coverage of District 1, 5A, Division 2. Two teams that are both already headed to the playoffs, but it's important because it, in terms of seeding here, a Northeast rivalry game between the Andrews Eagles and the Chapin Huskies. You can see the first place, the first play from scrimmage for the Huskies, and uh, we've been showing this kid's highlights all season long. This is Davian Singleton, and remember that name, calls his own number. Takes it for 40 yards into Eagle territory. A couple of plays later, running back Brandon Ortega takes, takes it in from five yards out, putting the Huskies on the board, 7-0. Andrews on the move here. Nice pass right here, but uh, couldn't complete the connection. Ooh, could have been see, And it would have been good for six, no doubt on that. But uh, remember Davian Singleton? Well, here he is again on the move. Making moves, busting loose. Following calling, his blocks. Calling his own number, showing off that speed. Davian Singleton, welcome to the end zone. He's going to overbalance there into the end zone. It was 14 to nothing, Chapin. The Huskies, you know, the, okay, they were, they, were, they were looking good, but not to, to be denied here. You see the, the Eagles on the attack. Quarterback Jeremiah Toski going to toss it to Zion Gonzalez, and he'll just toss it up himself. A nice grab. And uh, Andrus within striking distance with the quarterback keeper. And uh, Andrus finally on the board right there. And 
It was 14 to seven, Chapin, but Andrews chipping away. So a nice trickery play right there, the trickeration, but not incomplete there. And here, uh, Andrews fumbles it, recovered by the Huskies. Can tell you though, it's good back and forth in this one, as you see Andrews running it for the touchdown score here. The Eagles go on to win this one by a final score. We could pull up the final 35 to 28 of the final. Andrus, as a result, will get to host Abilene Cooper, while the Huskies, because of this result, losing to the Eagles tonight, will have to travel to Wichita Falls Rider. Rider. Of course, the, the champion in this district is Kennedy. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Well, we'll send things now to AB7's Jason McNabb. He was out at a couple of games in District 1, 5A, D2. Jefferson at Burgess and Irvin taking on Austin. Jason, one of the last games of the season, you'll be with us. Yeah, that's right, Rachel. Yeah. But, you know, instead of the usual routine of heading down to the lower valley, you know, for San Alley, today I stay in Central El Paso. First stop, Burgess. Jefferson starts out pretty early on right here with this ugly fumble that the Mustangs fall right on top of. Now, unfortunately for Burgess, they just cannot capitalize on this turnover. You see a missed drop pass right there. This pass from Andrew Routledge leads to a turnover on downs. There we go. First down Jefferson. They look like they're gaining momentum right here. Nice run from Miguel Rubio, but unfortunately falls apart. This nice little celebratory shove from his own teammate <laughs> falls right to the ground. You need him in the game. Come on. <laughs> well, Burgess then quickly drive it up the score. There they go, they run it in 14-0 right before halftime. Now it looks like we do not have the score to this game yet. Yeah, if you we'll, know the we'll final score right for the Jefferson and uh, Burgess game, go ahead and uh, let, give us a call, let us know, because we couldn't find that one. We, we, we rarely can ever find a score, but this one, like... This is it, a very special yeah. case. Yeah, yeah we were talking exactly about sure what happened here. both of those teams aren't going to play us, so we thought maybe people just weren't at the game and, and didn't let us know. But if you know, let us know, because we'd like to know. Yeah. Anyways... <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll head, we'll head back over to, to Austin, Brent Central El Paso, which definitely felt a little bit colder than, seven, than 49 up at the top of the stadium. Now Austin will face off against Andrews next week in the playoffs. Panthers looked absolutely determined to dominate Irvin tonight. Despite the score, you know, the score didn't look like it was, but it was uh, more lopsided than the score suggests. Leads to uh, this hilarious fourth down shuffle that you're about to see right here. I had to speed it up. <laughs> Miami Miracle, anyone? Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Ooh, Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, Irvin wasn't so lucky on this oh, one. This I was getting right excited through. for a sweet play. Uh, yeah, that was a turnover on downs. Now Austin is just running right up the field again. Nice run from Mark Sines. Hand off to Jaden Wilson. We'll turn the score to 27-7 by uh, the extra point right here. Final, 28-7, Austin. Thank you very much, Jason. Uh, J this is going to be Jason's actually last show with us yeah he, he informed me of that as i was heading out to my game earlier so jason thank you very much for for all your help this season and uh, i know we scheduled you to go to those outside counties like fabens mountain view but uh yeah this time we kept you closer why'd you have to break my time. heart live on air jason Come on now. sorry rachel you know we all we, we've got next year next year next year exactly i'm saying goodbye to him but i realize he's got the blitz picks coming up so we're gonna <laughs> see him again so that was a little bit premature J jason we'll see you jason in the deserves next two goodbyes <laughs> exactly that, that's, that's what we're saying here yeah. we'll <laughs> see we'll catch up with jason just a bit keeping it in for a, another big game with a district title on the line it's the Bowie bears traveling to ranger stadium if riverside win they clinch the title meanwhile a loss could see a three-way tie between Bowie, austin and riverside that's if um Austin won, which they did. We got there at halftime, and there was really no question who was winning this one. Riverside up 42 to nil, and it looked like Speedy was going to extend the lead in Monchin with the lateral pass. Angel Speedy, Skippy Munoz, he fends off one, darts around the outside, turns on the Jets, and then just teases the Bowie defenders with the zigzags here. But oh no, it was all for nothing. It's uh, called back. Hate it when and that Speedy is like, come on, I just <laughs> ran all that way, man. But no harm, no foul, because later in that drive on fourth down, it's Munchen to Jose Guadado up the middle, and look at that stride. That's not sped up at all. Guadado extends it on a 50-yard dash, and then Speedy would uh, get his turn, lined up at running back, gets the shovel pass, follows his blocks, and goes around the outside and all the way into the end zone. At this point, well, the game is over, and some of the players are ready to go to sleep. Uh, the leopard <laughs> blanket right there. I like that, yeah. Yeah, Speedy might have been a little asleep out there, too. Watch this. The ball just waiting to be in intercepted and uh straight through the arms it was in the bread basket 
the coach is giving it to him on the sideline too. Look at look at the circle arm. He's like, yeah, went straight through the middle. Riverside can't get the shutout, but it's still a demolition. They win 63 to six, but both teams still make the playoffs. Riverside are set to play Big Spring in the by district round. Meanwhile, Bowie will play Lubbock Estacado, if I pronounce that correctly. There you go, you got it. Lubbock Estacado, you got it. Uh, let's go ahead and move to district 14A, division two, Clint falls to Monahan's 58 to 14. And this is uh, this was really important because in our next game, Mountain View was in a must-win situation against Pecos. Win and they're in. And the Mountain View Lobos did just that to clinch the final playoff spot in District 1 for a Division 2. They they beat Pecos 30 to 24. So Mountain View gets the last playoff spot. Clint is eliminated, done for the season. One final score to get to in that was uh, over in Fabens as they hosted the Fort Stockton Panthers. It was just a really tough season for Fabens as um, they fall 44 to seven to those Panthers. Well, it's time for War of the Week. Let me just tell you, there wasn't much of a war out there. Maybe one of the shortest War of the Weeks really? we have ever seen. Yes, it was very quick. Lorenzo Labor hosts this week's War of the Week. Matt, somehow it is already the final week of the regular high school football season, and what a place to be for the final week. I'm here at Bel Air High School, and that's exactly who I have. I have the Bel Air Highlanders. Come on, guys, let's hear it. Wow, and I have the Del Valle Conquistadores. Come on, guys, let's start. I think we are about ready to get started here. Are we ready? Are we ready? All right, here we go in three, two, one, go! Oh man, this one is good. This one is good, Bel Air. Bel Air takes it, Bel Air wins. Come on guys, let's hear your victory chat. Let's hear your victory chat, come on guys. Tonight, so you know you gotta take it. Uh, we'll we'll be right back after the break. We'll recap one of the games from the last night, and then uh, also have the story from the Coronado team. A good education is key for every child, and ESC 19 Head Start is the best place for children to begin. Head Start is El Paso's premier preschool program for expectant mothers and children from birth to four years old. Our full range of services support early learning and development in high-quality educational environments. We also help parents with their educational and career goals with classes, training, and community resources. Call or visit us online to register today. City, we choose clean, renewable energy. So El Paso Electric is tripling the size of its community solar program in Texas. Coming 2024, the new facility will power 5,000 more homes and businesses, providing accessible solar for everyone, whether you rent or own. We even offer a discount to income qualified customers. Choose clean energy and safeguard yourself from increasing energy fuel rates, all without rooftop panels. Choose community solar, only from El Paso Electric. Join our reserve list today. Last night's game, Franklin needed a win over El Dorado last night in order to punch their ticket to the final playoff spot in District 16A. And you see right here, uh, Shea Smith to both Sparks, touchdown Cougs, and the Cougars got the job done. Take a look at this pass right here, El Dorado looking to make something happen, and the worst thing that can happen for the Aztecs does. It turns into a pick when it looked like it was going to be a catch oh. for El Dorado. And into the hands of and Bobby Sparks. This is another play of the week nominee for sure right there for those Cougars. Franklin gets the win by the final score of 42 to 24 franklin moving on they're going to take on midland legacy they'll have to travel to midland and they'll get the, those rebels coming up well let's turn now to blitz picks jason have we got any good ones this week you know rachel we're a little white today but we do have a couple good ones we'll start right off mr ray navarre of course he always brings the goods this is from del valle versus bel air very nice action shot now something that uh that we haven't seen yet um not a lot with uh, with blitzy the bear we have our one of our best ones this week with Sergio Gutierrez holding Blitzy the Bear here at Isleta High School. 
that's gonna be our winner. Congratulations, yes. Sergio. You have won a $50 gift card. Now you guys have one more week next week. That is the last chance. That is it. Thank you very much, Jason, for all your help again yeah. this whole season. Thank you, I appreciate it. And shout out to Sergio. He's uh, supposedly a long time viewer of the Blitz, so we're happy that awesome. we get to reward him with that. Well, uh, the Coronado Thunderbirds season, the first of the Coach Pry era, came to an end tonight with a 41 to 35 win over Montwood. And while they may not have secured a playoff spot this year, it is clearly a rejuvenated program under Pry's reign, a lot of which he credits to another coach. Take a look. It's a tradition in Texas as old as any. Football on a Friday night under the bright lights. But Coach Orozco chooses to watch it all from the darkness. Just him, his chair, and his batting cages behind him. But that wasn't always the case. For more than 20 years, on and off between the 80s to the early 2000s, Coach Orozco was instead firmly planted on the sidelines as the offensive coordinator for Coronado High School. During that time, he coached this guy, the now head coach of the Coronado Thunderbirds, Mike Pry. He was tough back then. He wasn't the nice guy he is now. He demanded the best out of us. And if you weren't giving anything but your best, it was get on the line and run. So I remember one time they made us bear crawl through the mud. I think he did it just for the fun of it. Maybe for the fun of it, but clearly it also worked because the team at the time won back-to-back -back district championships. And that was really just the beginning of what they won, having Coach Orozco as a Thunderbird. If you think about the thousands of kids that he's affected, not, not hundreds, thousands in his career, it's, it's astonishing. And um, a lot of people wouldn't be in the places they were if it wasn't for uh, Coach Orozco. <laughs> And that includes Coach Pry. You know, as kids, when they watch their parents, they learn so much by imitating and watching. And as a kid, I would watch some of the best role models you could ask for um, and the coaches that we had here at Coronado. Pry is just the fourth head coach of Coronado football since 1965. And while this is only his first season at the helm, it seems like it was always a perfect fit. It doesn't surprise me because uh, he's always been a, a character guy. He really has, you know, and, um, and he does things right. And I think that's the most important thing. After Pry graduated from Coronado, he went on to play at UTEP before moving out of town and getting out of football altogether. One day the light kind of went on. It's like, hey, what am I doing with myself? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm making good money, but I'm not doing anything for anybody else. So that's when I decided to get back into coaching and move back to El Paso. And it's, uh, uh, this has been a dream of mine is to, to be at Coronado since because of these coaches. And the beauty of it all, he gets to do it with Coach Orozco by his side. Well, just a field away. You know what's crazy? It's kind of like a little kid that has their blankie um, because he's my safety blanket. I'll ask him questions every day. Coach, how do I do this? How do I do that? And he's, you know, he'll come in and good luck tonight. Here's what to look for. So he doesn't ever stop coaching. Um, I think I just hope that these kids do well in life, you know, and, um, and he's done really well for us, but not for himself too, for Coronado High School. Are we running some? Uh, what are we running? <sighs> That's it. That's it. Hey, uh, I love you, man. I love you too, Coach. Thank you for yes, everything. Sir, no problem. And with that win over Montwood tonight, the Thunderbirds end their first season under Coach Pry, three and seven. That's the first time they've got three wins on a season since the 2018 season. And after seeing the Coronado coaching connection in person, I have a feeling there will be plenty more wins really? in the seasons to come. Awesome story. Thank you. Well, we've got uh, scores after break, so stay with us. Wait until 2023 and start your new career today. Enroll now at Southwest University. We offer flexible schedules and short terms for you to finish your degree faster. Apply today and become an essential worker in the nursing, surgical tech, or health admin fields. That's right. We are now accepting applications to become a registered nurse, surgical tech, or healthcare administrator. For more information, call us today at 915-778-4001 or visit us at southwestuniversity.edu. Southwest University makes you happen. Delicious pizza on dough made from scratch daily. New and classic games everyone loves. The post-match celebration. It's all made to be shared. And now for a limited time, get this extremely tasty deal. A large scratch made extreme pepperoni pizza, just $15.49. Peter Piper Pizza, pizza made fresh, families made happy. 
Casa Auto Group was founded in 1969 with the mission of serving others, doing what's right, and valuing people. Today, we're excited to announce that we're expanding. We're opening Casa Honda, Casa Toyota, Casa Chevy Buick GMC, and Casa Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Alamogordo, New Mexico. We're getting bigger to serve you better. You'll get the same award-winning service you expect from Casa and free delivery of any new car up to 100 miles from any Casa location. Our Casa is Sue Casa. Yeah! Go ahead and take a look at recapping the scores from the final week of the regular season in high school football. East Lake falling to the Eastwood Troopers by a final score of 42 to nil. America's over Socorro, 56 to nothing. Coronado over Montwood, 41 to 35. Del Valle District Champs over Bel Air, 66 to seven. Isleta clinches the last playoff spot over Hanks, 28 to 10. And Parkland over Horizon, 48 to 10. Then we've got Canantillo getting the double over El Paso. Andres over Chapin. Burgess Jefferson, that score we couldn't get to before. Burgess win 35 to three. Austin over Irvin. Riverside getting the double over Bowie and Fort Stockton over Fabens. Other 4A scores, Monahans over Clint. Mountain View needed a, was a must win, and they got the win over Pecos. They clinched the last playoff spot due to those Lobos. Anthony falls to Ozona, 32-9. Mayfield moving on to the regional quarterfinals of the playoffs after defeating Santa Teresa in the first round, 21-10. And as we, as we showed you earlier, Franklin clinches the last playoff spot in District 1-6A, 42-24 over Al Dorado. So Franklin will have to hit the road to Midland Legacy. Pebble Hills Spartans, we didn't mention it earlier, They'll be hosting the Mojo Odessa Permian. They'll be coming to town. So that's the that's the perks Pebble Hills gets yeah, for being the, the champions of District yeah. 6 a Well, hey, yeah. thanks so much for joining us. Second last week of the Blitz. Last yeah. one coming up next Friday. Season finale next week. See you then. Thank you for watching. ABC7 News is now available on any of these streaming services as well as the KVIA News and KVIA Weather and Traffic apps.